Greetings to everybody here in this study today. And today our study is having a title World Trade Center and the Birth of Christ. And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. The sun, moon and stars were set by the Creator to serve as a celestial clock showing us the day, month and year, or the exact time of an event. The three lights in the heavenly firmament, the sun, moon and stars, are moving at different speeds, so we can observe them as the three hands of a great heavenly clock, and they are showing us the exact time and day of some event. For an easy observance of the sky, the stars are divided in 88 constellations. The constellations through which the sun and the moon pass during their annual movement across the firmament are called zodiac constellations and there are 12 of them in total. The belt in which these constellations are located is called the celestial equator. The zodiac is an imaginary belt in the heavenly firmament in extent of 360 degrees and 70 degrees in width, through which, as seen from Earth, the Sun and Moon move. It is divided into 12 signs of 30 degrees each. People from the first century use astronomical signs to observe and record important historical and religious events, especially the birth of kings. For this reason, the section on the birth of Jesus in the book of Revelation is also associated with certain heavenly signs. Jesus himself said, Great signs shall there be from heaven. Therefore, let us look at Revelation where precise indications are given for the month and the day when Jesus was born. Revelation 12.1 And there appeared a great wonder or a sign in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. John said that he saw the great wonder sign, and it was in heaven. What he thought of when he said in heaven, it is the heavenly firmament, and on it as on a screen are a woman, the sun and the moon, and the twelve stars shone above her head. On earth a woman gives birth to a male child, a son. It is a woman, the Virgin Mary, who is pregnant and about to give birth to a son. Mercury, Mars, Venus, along with the nine stars from the constellation of Lion, make the wreath or a crown with twelve stars upon her head. The question is, is there a constellation of Virgin in the heavenly firmament? <clears throat> the constellation of Virgin exists and it's located in the heavenly equator as one of the twelve constellations of the zodiac. And there appeared another wonder or a sign in heaven, and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. In the modern zodiac under the Virgin we have a constellation of scales and scorpion. At the time of Jesus Christ, these two constellations were seen as one, known as a dragon. We also have a third sign, which is related to the constellation of Lion. Coming in Jerusalem, the wise men asked, saying, Where is he that is born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. What did wise men observe? The picture shows the constellation of Lion in which the brightest star is a Regulus or the Royal Star. The wise men were reading the scriptures of the Old Testament and they recognized that the King Messiah needs to be born, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. They observed the constellation of Lion. The constellation of Lion indicates the birth of the king of Lion which proceeds from the tribe of Judah. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed. The wise men observe constellation of Lion 
and how the greatest royal planet Jupiter and royal star Regulus came together. Thus connected, they emitted great shine, and it indicated them the birth of an extremely powerful King Messiah, who was meant to be, according to the Holy Scriptures, a lion of the tribe of Judah. In order for all these signs in heaven to come up together, which is woman clothed in sun, a new moon under her feet, Regulus and Jupiter in conjunction with the lion, which is the twelve stars, it needs to pass long astronomical periods and epochs. The computer summarizing these signs shows the date of September 11, 3 BC. It is the only date across the many centuries when all these signs in heaven had come together, revealing the birth of Jesus Christ. Why was September 11 chosen for the destruction of the Twin Towers? Father and Son are pictured in the scriptures as if they were twins. He that has seen me had seen the Father, said Jesus. I and my Father are one. Two persons, but identical in holiness, act, love, thoughts and feelings as identical twins. The first advent of God's Son into this world as a saviour of mankind, born on September 11, 3 BC, Satan experienced as an attack on the territory which he usurped for himself. By demolishing the Twin Towers, he revealed his anger which he has towards the Father and his Son, and their actions in this world. The book of Revelation 9, 11, 9 verse 11, which but also contains the specific date, describes Satan as an angel of bottomless pit whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue Apollyon, which both mean a destroyer, or the one who destroys. And by doing so, the devil indeed proved that he is a destroyer. It is interesting to mention that God commanded to Lucifer, if he wants to imitate God, or to be a God, then he must act as God, and God will surely do nothing except he first reveal his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And thus Satan must reveal all his secrets beforehand, that the ones that he is intending to do. Thus he predicted demolition of the towers in social games and cartoons. Here we have a card of a board game which was in function back in 1995 and for six years beforehand was announcing the destruction of the Twin Towers, which was to take place in 2001. It is also interesting that the explosion and the fire on the card resemble the same on the actual photo which was captured during the event. It is interesting that there is a $9 price in the brochure next to the Twin Towers, which alludes to 9-11. Remember that this episode was broadcast in September 1997 and in the bottom right corner there is a picture telling us the destruction of those towers is coming soon. On the next picture we have a scene from the film Star Wars. Here is the helmet of a soldier which bears the following numbers. Number 9 is connected with two horizontal lines which represents 9 slash 11 and 01 marks the year 2001. Also the orange line at the back of the helmet in numerology represents number 33. The powers were built in 1968 and the destruction was in 2001 which is exactly 33 years later. This number also points to the 33 degrees in Freemasonry. Next picture shows Pirelli Tires poster from 1998. 9-11 was Jewish fire, which means that behind this attack were Jewish Masons and royal families which belonged to secret societies. Everything was done under a false flag to condemn Islam 
for the terrorism. We have a book of Thomas Chistain from 1976, then a very famous TV show Friends from 1990, where we have the Twin Towers and the message behind Friends end, or in the other words, Friends is the end of the towers. Next is the magazine from 1976 on the left and a Viceland magazine on the right from 1994 where two Islamists and are holding the bomb and showing a satanic sign with their two fingers. Then we have international Pakistani airline via Pier from 1979. 30 seconds over New York from 1970 and also Latin America from 1983. Then we have a video game from Microsoft from 1988 and a comic book Terminator from and in every picture we can see the Twin Towers and their destruction. Now we have a scene from a film called Gremlins 2 from 1990 and upon two microphones we have numbers 9 and 11 which indicated September 11. In Matrix film from 1999 the date was mentioned, the exact date was mentioned even year. That the date according to Jewish calendar was on Tishri 1st, which is the beginning of New Year for Jews and the Feast of Day of Trumpets. And on that day it was September 11, according to the actual calendar we use today. How can we know that it was the first day of the new moon? when the new month begins. Because they calculate time according to the moon, their calendar is lunar and solar. And there appear the great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. What does the phrase moon under her feet mean? We are going to read two biblical texts which are going to explain this to us. And the God of peace shall brew Satan under your feet shortly. The end of a time or the end of Satan. And in the other case it says, For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet, which is the end of a time or the end of enemy. Under feet means time's up or the end. The moon under the feet signifies the expiration of time, the end of one month and the beginning of another in the sign of a virgin woman. But it is also the end of one lunar year which is calculated by the moon and the beginning of another lunar year which also begins in the sign of a virgin woman. Christ's birth would take place just past the sunset, for the shepherds kept the night watch and with Jews the day begins with the sunset indeed. Angel told them, For unto you is born this day, when the sun has already set, and night begun, and with it the new day. It was new moon at the time of virgin, when Elul month ended, and the new month Tishri began. At the time of virgin, it is the seventh month of the Jewish religious year, but the first month of the civil year. Jesus was born on Tishri 1st, on Rosh Hashanah, or the Day of Trumpet, Jewish New Year. There is no better day in the Jewish feast calendar for the introduction of the Messiah into the world from a Jewish point of view. It is because one year ended, a new civil year began indeed with the birth of Christ. This also means that new era began also. No doubt, this is what the Apostle John clearly intended to show as a sign in Revelation 12. Also, the phrase moon under the feet means the end of a calendar Old Testament era and the beginning of the calendar New Testament era with the birth of the Saviour Jesus Christ, the Son of Righteousness. And with this text we would end this study here today. May the Lord be with us all until the next fellowship. God bless.